Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome to this part one of a tutorial series for Surviving Mars. We're going to be taking a look at the overview of the game, how to get yourself set up on the planet when you first land and how to start thriving ready for human life to come and join you. Uh, as you look at the game, the first button you'll see is Easy Start. You can click that, that will take you straight into the game with uh, a simple setup and everything you need to get started. But we're actually going to click New Game here so we can have a look at some of the options, maybe tweak them a little and go over some of the uh, various changes you can make to uh, up or decrease the difficulty as you play. You have four options once you've clicked New Game. The first one being Mission Sponsor. Mission Sponsor really makes or breaks the type of game that you're going to play. Uh, it sets up a lot of the difficulty level, it sets up how many rockets you can send to the planet, sets up lots of other things as well. There's plenty to choose from. They're all based on either countries or some private companies like Blue Sun here, Space Y, obviously a, a Mickey Take of Space X. Um, the, uh, the, the one it starts you off with, International Mars Mission, it's actually the easiest one. On. The idea is that all different countries have got together to send you to Mars, which means you get loads of cash, 30,000 million uh, in funding. Um, research per sol, we're going to look at research a little bit later on, but you get 300 per day, which is pretty standard. Uh, lots of people wanting to move to Mars. You get a very large amount of space that you can put onto the rockets that you're going to send to Mars. Colonists don't get Earth sick, so you haven't got to worry about them uh, feeling a bit sorry for themselves. Um, you get a big, big food supply when people eventually move to the planet and also here's the big one rockets synthesize fuel uh, no matter which you play eventually you're going to run out of rockets on earth to send to mars you're going to have to send some of your rockets back to earth uh, to regroup and bring more stuff or more people to do that, you're going to have to fill them up with fuel. So, you're going to have to get set up a full fuel factory up there, get the resources, make the fuel, fill up the rockets. Here, with International Mars Mission, the rockets will, over time, build up the fuel stores themselves. It is a complete game changer. It makes it much easier to start off with. I would highly recommend, if you're new to the game, try and go International Mars Mission first. Uh, see if you get used to it. If you find it's too easy, you can come back, start again, and pick one of the other ones. They all have various different setups. Uh, some bonus tech, some extra uh, rockets, some extra people. So this one here, look, Church of the New Ark, is very religious, so all the colleges have the religious trait, and birth rate is doubled, and um, for some reason, the hydroponic farms don't work as well. You know, it, give or take, you also don't get any research from them as well. That's going to be quite a tricky one, that. So we're going to start with International Mars Mission. Second one then, Commander Profile. This one doesn't matter as much. Basically, this gives you a little perk depending on what your job was before it became your job to be the leader of Mars or whatever it is, I guess. Uh, so there's, again, various perks here. If you're an inventor, you get a bit of a tech bonus. Politician will give you... Um, repeatable tech that grants funding because you're dead sort of smarmy and, and charismatic. Uh, one of the ones I would personally suggest to start with is Rocket Scientist. This gives you an extra rocket to start off with, which is great news for getting resources up to the planet, but also it gives you this CO2 jet propulsion, uh, which means it gives you long, long range transportation, so a little bit later into the game you can send rockets back and forth a lot easier. Uh, the other one I would recommend maybe is Hydro Engineer because it gives you a water deposit straight away as well, and uh, domes can choose 20 consume, sorry, 25% less water. Uh, water, oxygen and power are your three main resources you need for humans, so uh, any way to make those easier to get uh, is going to be very, very useful. We're going to go for Rocket Scientist. Next one, company logo. This is literally cosmetic. It's just what your, uh, what your logo is. It's on the side of your ships. That's about it. We're going to go for Brussels sprouts because why wouldn't you? Finally, the last one you choose, Mystery. Don't know too much about these ones yet, but basically it's the story of the game. About midway, halfway through the game, uh, once you sort of set up and you've got people on the planet, one of these stories will kick in and uh, will give you a mystery to solve on the planet. You can either pick which one you want, you can click random, or you can click none if you want to just play a bit more of a sort of sandbox type level. I wouldn't recommend choosing random to start off with because it may well throw you in right at the hard end. So either choose none for your first game or go for one of the easy ones. We're going to select the power of three. Next thing we're going to be looking at is what is coming with us on our first rocket. Uh, first of all, you've got prefab buildings. It's going to select all of these that it thinks you're going to need to start off with. First of all, a drone hub. That is a building for organizing your drones. Your drones are the workhorses of the planet. They're going to be shipping stuff around. They're going to be building stuff. They're going to be moving uh, materials around the place. Really, really useful. Drone hub is going to help organize them. Again, we'll get into this a little bit later on once we're actually on the planet. Next one is a moisture evaporator. It's basically a bit 
of water. You plonk this down, it makes water. All it needs is power. Uh, fuel refinery, um, you're going to take water to it, it turns it into fuel. If you've gone for the International Mars mission, you won't need this because the, the uh, rockets make their own fuel, okay? Sterling generator is basically some free power. You pop it down on the ground, it makes power. Simple as that. And then we have a machine parts factory, an electronics factory, and a polymer factory. Each of these are second tier resources. You're going to put one of the early resources into it, either metals or concrete, things like that. And they're going to churn out a higher up thing, machine parts, electronics, or polymer. All of these are used to repair and maintain your buildings. I wouldn't worry about them too much to start off with because with them, the setup we've gone for here, it's going to be very easy for us to send ships back and forth from Earth and bring some of these uh, machine parts, electronics and polymers with us. So for now, I think that's a great setup. We've got a bit of power, a bit of water and a drone hub. That's a great place to get started. Next up, we're going to have one of each of the rovers. Again, we're going to talk about those a little bit more when we get down onto the surface of Mars. And six drones that are going to be looked after by the actual ship. Concrete, metals, and food. We're not going to worry about any of those. Food, you're not going to need for a little while, and uh, and the and your humans are going to bring food with them. Uh, metals and concrete are very, very simple to get on the ground of Mars itself. And then polymers, machine parts, electronics, those are great. Get some of those with you to start off with because you're going to they're not going to be able to be farmed very easily. You need humans on the planet to farm those, so you're going to want a good few of those. And then finally, orbital, orbital probe, excuse me, are a way of uh, clearing some of the map off. I don't find these as, as useful as uh, other. I've seen a few other people do, so I'm going to actually knock those down a little bit, and I'm going to bump up our electronics a little bit, because they're going to be more useful for us in the first place. Finally, you can rename your ship if you want to. Liberty number one sounds great to me, so I'm going to click next. The next screen, we're nearly in the game, don't worry. The next screen is to choose the landing spot where we're going to actually park down our buttons here on Mars. There are, if you use the right mouse button, you can uh, spin around. Obviously, the controls will be different if you're playing on, um, on a console. There are some setups already. So you can have a look at those. Basically, it'll tell you how good the resources resources are and the possibility of the threats that you can get. So obviously some are going to be trickier, some are going to be more difficult. You'll see that the difficulty bonus there is going up or down depending on how difficult it considers them to be. To start off with, I would recommend one of these two here on the equator, Elysium Alpha or Elysium Beta, have a nice stock of resources and quite low threats. We're going to go for Elysium Beta here. You can actually just choose anywhere on the map if you want to, and it will randomly generate the map for you based on where you click and based on the numbers it's going to give you here. To start off with, we're going to have a look at Elysium Beta. And we are almost on the surface of Mars. You get this large map overview. This isn't going to be how you play the game. This is going to be the map. And one of the squares will be open. Now, this is random, as is the placement of the resources on the map. So even though the map will look like this, if you're following along with this tutorial, where stuff is and where you're going to be starting off is completely different. First of all, we have two orbitable probes. Orbitable, I can't say that word. We have two of these probe things. We did have four, but we're not content to two. Basically, these give you a free square to open up. Have a look and see which one's got a decent amount of buildable area on. So that's 46%, 10%, that's a bit rough and ready, 77, 42, 74. So the two I'm going to use are this one here and this one here. We've got a couple of nice sort of uh, anomalies here that we'll go into in a moment and a couple of resources as well. We're looking pretty good. The last thing you can do is also queue up up to four different squares to be uh, found and opened up as well. All you have to do is click Let's just work our way around here. That looks pretty good. Next thing we're going to have to do is choose where Liberty One is going to land. So we're going to use our scroll wheel here to zoom in and we're going to have a look. So your basic resources to start off with, start off with even, sorry, is concrete and metal. Concrete is in the ground. It's not actually concrete, it's stone, but we're going to turn it into concrete. Looks like this slightly lighter colored patch here with a mountain symbol in the middle of it. The metal that we're going to start with is actually surface deposits. So you'll see them, the little lumps and there. They're various different shapes and sizes, but you'll be able to see a few of them around here. Let's have a look. We haven't actually got that much of it, to be honest with you. Uh, but maybe there's some down here. Uh, there we go. There's a couple little blobs here. Yeah, there's quite a bit there. Look, so we're looking pretty good. Those are the first two things that we're going to get sorted. So make sure that we're looking somewhere near both of those. The other things you'll notice on the map are this one, pretty self-explanatory. That's underground water. 
These yellow ones are what we call anomalies. These are going to be explored in a little while, and they're going to give us various little boosts, either free research points, extra technology for our technology tree that we're looking at. Sometimes they'll give us rare metals. Sometimes they'll just give us some cash or, or other little bonuses. There's various things they can give you. They're really good, but don't worry about having to be too close to them because your little rover explorer will be able to pop out and get those at a pretty fair distance. So we're going to be looking somewhere we can get concrete and metal and also have a bit of flat land away from those uh, because all the things that are going to farm this stuff up is going to create dust and we're going to want to keep dust as away from uh, everything else as much as possible. So I think this little area here is pretty much perfect for our ship. So we're going to give it a click and then choose where it goes. Now a couple of things that are important here. One, you can use the middle mouse button to rotate. With the ship, it's pretty much just sort of uh, for looks-wise, really, where it lands. It doesn't matter too much. The other thing you want to notice is around it, you'll see a hexagonal space. That's really important. That space is its area of influence for the drones that it comes with. All the drones on the map are only going to work if they're inside the controller that looks after them. Okay, so here, we want to make sure that this has got the best coverage of these sort of simple resources that we're starting off with. So if I look at somewhere around here, that means that our drones will be able to access all of this metal down the bottom of the screen. One, two, three concretes, also the water and, uh, and that top metal there as well. So that really there is a great spot to start off with. So we're going to give that a click and then our ship will come down and land. Once your ship has landed, your little RC units will come off first, followed by the most adorable thing to ever set foot on the surface of Mars, your rovers. You'll get a few rovers from your uh, your drones, sorry. You'll get a few drones from your rover, and you'll get a few drones from your, uh, your ship, uh, depending on how many we have. So we have six from the ship, and we have four from the rover. You'll see the rover also has an area of influence. So the drones that it looks after will only be able to do something inside of this area of influence. And these ship drones here will only be able to do stuff inside this larger area of influence. That drone uh, tran drone building that we picked up earlier, the drone hub, basically works the exact same as this ship. But it's stuck on the planet, it stays there. Uh, whereas the ship eventually will probably end up going back to um, the Earth for various reasons. Okay, cool. So first things first, let's get our um, Explorer RC picking up some of these yellow blobs, okay? So all they have to do is click it, left click, right click on one of these things here. It'll go over, it'll check it out, it takes a little time and we'll get whatever goodies are from it, okay? Otherwise, we need to start working on our basic materials, which are concrete and metal. Metal's the easiest one and the one you want to start off with. Take your transport and literally go and right click on the metal It'll head over there, it'll go and farm some up. It is literally that simple. Uh, it can store so much metal on it itself. I think it's 30 as a base number. That number can be increased later on. So it'll go and stick 30 metal on there. But we'd like these guys to come and get some metal as well. To do that, we need to find somewhere for them to put the metal. So if we right click anywhere on the, uh, on the map, we'll bring up our building menu. We're going to click here on to storages. And each of these are just literally mats that go down the floor and designate a space for stuff to be stored. Uh, the Universal Depot will hold 30 of each re uh, resource in the game and be looked after there. So we're going to place one of these down here. And you'll see now what will happen is the drones will head onto the ship and they'll take all the gear off the ship that's come with us. The polymer, the electronics and things like that. And they'll stack them up here on this, uh, on this mat. You'll see here that they guys, uh, the little drones, have got all the stuff off the ship. So they now automatically have gone and started collecting some of this metal. If they've got nothing else to do and there's some metal in the ground, they'll they'll, they'll go and do that. Okay, uh, You can't actually directly control what the drones do uh, necessarily. Well, you can actually, but it's mega micromanagement. You want to be able to set it up so that these guys will go and do whatever's needed. Now... We now have metal, which means we can build what we need to start getting concrete. So it's right click, uh, oh we've got the drone, we've got him selected there, sorry, you carry on getting some of that uh, stone please, little buddy. Thank you. So we're going to right click here and we're going to look at our production. And the first one you'll see here, concrete extractor requires six pieces of metal and two machine parts. Now machine parts are something that we bought with us, so we've got all we need for that. It also uses five um, power per sol. Uh, a sol, by the way, is a day on Mars. It's about 25 hours in real life, I think. Here, 
it's probably about 15 minutes gameplay, something like that on basic speed. Uh, so we need six metal and two machine parts. No problem, we have all of that. What we're going to do is complete it here, and what we want to happen is that this uh, this shaded area in front of it is completely over one of the uh, the concrete blobs here. So we're going to come and place it. Uh, let's build it onto this one here. It will do like so. These guys will instantly jump into speed. You'll see that these six here that are uh, attached to the ship will come and grab it because it's within their remit. Uh, but these four here won't because it's just out. You can easily fix that by bringing this guy over a little bit. As soon as his uh, area is in space, they'll jump into action and, uh, and start helping out these guys. Here is quite interesting. They're taking the raw metal straight from the floor and placing it over there. That's great. And that will get built. So once that's built, uh, that will start collecting some concrete as soon as we've got it powered up you'll see here it's telling us that the building is not working if we give it a click it'll show us which building and that's because we don't have any power so we're going to get some very basic power set up if you followed me uh, pretty much perfectly one thing you will have for free is under power a couple of sterling generators. If you haven't got sterling generators, I suggest going for the uh, simple solar panels or the large solar panels. You won't be able to do wind turbines until you've got some concrete. You can't get concrete until this thing's kicked in, so it's a bit of a catch-22. We're going to use our sterling generators, though. I'm going to place them a little bit away from there because we don't want the dust to be bothered them, okay? Uh, we're clicking in unexplored sector there. We must be on the right on the edge of the map. Let's have a look. Uh, oh, yes, we are. We're part right up on the map, actually, so we need to build this... Uh, a little bit more over this way actually so that's fine again it doesn't really matter too much you're going to run power lines across all of this in a little while so we'll place you do you know what we're probably not going to use the concrete over here so we'll place these here and we're going to put both of them down because we can and here those guys will uh, get built there these are prefabs these came with us on the ship so all that needs to happen here is a drone needs to head over and, uh, and work his magic we'll watch this one actually happen Jup, 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 jup. There we go, and they'll get those built up. Okay, great. So if uh, these can be opened and closed, okay. If they're open, they'll produce more power. If they're closed, they will uh, not need maintaining as often because the dust doesn't get into or something like that. Okay. So uh, now we've got those there. We're going to run some power lines from them. So under your power menu, you'll see power cables here, and these are a case of just having to be next to them to get power from them, and uh, we're going to bring them down here. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do it like a straight line because we work on this funky hexagonal thing. You'll be able to see when a power line is joined up because you'll get a thin line from uh, the machine to the power line there. So we've got power joined up there. And over here, you'll see that both of these sterling generators are joined up to it over here. Uh, and then using a little bit of metal, as these drone guys are doing here, they'll come and grab the metal. They'll fill in the power line just like that. And here it goes. Last piece goes in. You'll see that all of those little numbers go away now. These guys are producing power that's going somewhere, and this guy is receiving the power. The concrete extractor not only creates concrete, it also creates waste rock. Now, if we don't do anything else, the waste rock will just be dumped around the place, gets a little bit messy, gets a little bit difficult to manage. So we're actually going to issue a little space for that waste rock to go. We're going to right-click, we're going to go into storages, and you'll see down here, dumping site. You can place this anywhere you like. If you wanted to, you can place it over here. It would just make more work for your drones. You've always got to think the, um, try and get the least, the path of least resistance for these little guys, because they're going to be doing a lot of work. So we're going to be placing um, it nearby you'll notice the text over it changes from blue uh, sorry from red to a yellowy color red means it physically can't go there because it's something's in the way yellow will mean that it can go there if you want but it's probably not ideal in this case it's overlapping the actual concrete deposit now we're doing most of our concrete work over here so I don't actually mind that it's overlapping the concrete deposit a little so we're gonna place that down it doesn't need to be built it is literally just a space that is now designated as the place we're going to be sticking the waste Sex is scanned. What that means is uh, that number that we clicked before is now finished. So we've got these uh, four areas now. These three are still going. It's working on that one. We can always do four. So, um, so I'm going to click another one. These are kind of useless here because we've got a lot of rock around us. So instead, we're going to work over towards this way. You can see that the ground's a bit flatter and going to be much more useful. So there we go. We've now got um, we've now got metal coming in. Not loads, but we've got metal coming in. This little guy here is almost full. 
So I'm going to click over here. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how to organize your RCs and your drones a little bit better. But for now, you'll see here that this guy has got 26 metal on him. He can carry 30. So, uh, so as soon as he's got 30, let's just speed it up a little bit so he gets there a bit quicker. I'm going to show you what you can do with him. Because at the moment, he'll just sit there with it on his back and it's no problem. But what we're actually going to do is click this one here, unload resources. And we click there and then we right click. Uh, sorry, actually, a left click once we click that one over to here. He'll head over here and he'll dump all this stuff down onto the storage. He can't because it's full. So I'll tell you what we'll do to finish off this first episode. We'll get a, a metals depot next to it. This is the exact same as that, but it will only have metals stored on it. So we click here and dump our metal off. You can automate all of this. And um, that's what we're going to be looking at in episode number two. But we've got electricity. We've got concrete, we've got metal, they're your three basic resources, we're up and running on Mars, nobody's died, probably because nobody's alive here yet, but we are set up for episode two of our tutorial series where we'll organise our drones and our RCs a little bit better. Thank you so much for watching, if you've enjoyed it please give us a like, it really does help out the channel, and uh, if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe for loads more Surviving Mars content, I'm pretty obsessed with this game at the minute so there's going to be a lot more coming to the channel, and also some other great simulation and creative games such as Planet Coaster, uh, the movies, uh, all different sorts of stuff, so I hope you find something that you enjoy. Uh, if you've got any thoughts queries suggestions pop those down into the comments if you fancy a chat you can find me on twitter i'm at john t sparrow if you'd like to join in with the geekism community you can do so over on our geekism discord server you'll find the links to that in the description thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one